Welcome back to Tom's World Scale Model Series. In this episode, we look at the 135th scale Tamiya Steer 1500A light utility truck. If you enjoy programming on scale modeling, then show your support by subscribing to this channel. Leave us a comment, like, dislike, or share the video with friends. Clicking the notification bell gives you alerts when we post new content. Or visit the channel Tom's World for a friendly visit for a complete list of all our videos. As the German forces desperately rushed to mechanize their forces, the military establishment scoured the country for suitable vehicles and designs that could be pressed into service. Enter the Steer 1500A. Having earned its reputation in the fighting in North Africa, this light military transport was renowned for its reliability and stout design. In this episode, we'll unbox Tamiya's 135th scale offering and take an in-depth look at this beautiful and simple kit. Great engineering, crisp molding, clear instructions and plenty of value-added parts, this kit is a fitting tribute to its venerable subject. Alright, so here it is, the Tamiya 135th scale German Steer Type 1500A01 in Africa Corps Infantry at Rest. Kit number 35305, picked that up for $40 Canadian, delivered to my door, so kind of a mid-ranged kit. Interestingly enough, if you're looking to build a steer truck, especially the one that served in German units, no other manufacturers make them. I checked even Italeri and Dragon, they've got the steer tractor, but they don't have this truck, so this is it. So whatever you're going to build if you're going to build a steer 1500a to me is it and they've got a couple of variants out that uh, we'll talk about a little bit in the, in the family tree so here it is the box is crushed again i've got to talk to my uh, supplier here because uh, this box is crushed we're kind of spoiled in north america when we buy things that are always pristine again no shrink wrap people tell me that that's not uncommon outside the north american market so we'll go with it does depict uh, some of the crew that are inside we'll talk about that a little bit more but it is kind of a desert theme there's really nothing specific uh, that makes it desert other than maybe the markings and the Spain the paint scheme if you purchase this kit It does have figures for a different campaign different theater of operations, but we'll go with this Kind of desert theme my only knock on this is the color yellow here this ochre is just incorrect I I've never seen a German tan or even the paint schemes that they suggest in here One of them is Dunkel Gelb and the other one you mix which we'll look at just in a second does not resemble this the buff is correct But this is not right However, we'll look at that in a moment. Nothing really remarkable. Nice hand-painted cover as usual. It does depict some jerry cans. It doesn't show all the equipment that comes in here. Again, this is one of the cases where the cover doesn't really tell the whole story. And we'll see that in a minute. And in fact, when we look at this side of the box, they do kind of capture that uh, color a little bit better. It's kind of that German, I don't know, orangey kind of almost pinkish color. Uh, and they do actually tell you how to mix it here and it's done with uh, they want you to mix f uh, flesh and red brown to get that color some of the Panzer three models I've seen around have that paint scheme and that's just one and there's three different paint schemes that we'll look at in a second so so there is that side of the box and this side of the box I've got kind of the finished model nothing really uh, mind-blowing here just your typical kind of to me a product shot it's adequate but not great now the box is really shiny so it's hard to get good shots in fact if you look carefully you can see the green little mark from my camera but anyways there it is we're digressing and uh, there it is there on these guys kind of guys at rest now those two guys sitting inside look kind of like twins and you can actually pose those guys differently, but you know, we'll look at that in a second. So what else can we talk about? Let me just focus this real quick. Why don't we do a quick box measurement? What do we got here? So it's 11 and a half inches long times 29 centimeters. Uh, width wise, 7 and a half by 19 centimeters and tall. Not so tall. Two and a half inches. And what is it? Six centimeters. Yeah, two and a half inches tall and six centimeters. So not a huge box. So there it is there. Now to really understand the contents, we have to look at the family tree. Now the kind of the lineage is rather short, but let's have a quick look at that now. And then uh, we'll delve into the instructions and we'll have a look at the sprues. And then we'll talk a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of the kit. The Tamiya 135th scale steer line has evolved through five incarnations. Unfortunately, information on some of these kits is practically non-existent. I couldn't find any online reviews. And even on Tamiya's website, information on the contents of some of these releases was practically non-existent. Furthermore, my favorite American online retailers and local sources here in Canada didn't stock some of these kits. Tamiya's first modern release of the Steer came in 1998. That was kit 35225. It's often referred to as a new tooling. Uh, the company's been around since the late 40s, so it is plausible there's an older release somewhere. You'll find the base kit inside most of the subsequent releases. 
Four sprues make up the base kit, comes with two figures, clear windscreens, polycap wheels, a small sheet of nylon mesh, and the option to stow the spare inside or out. The kit is available at most major retailers in North America. Then in 1999, Tamiya released kit 35235, the Commander Wagon. Not much information is available on this kit. The real article had uber plush seats and a pimped up interior befitting a commander, so it would be interesting to see if Tamiya actually captures this. This kit likely includes new sprues for the doors and roof, as well as a theme-specific decal sheet. That was followed by kit 35305 in 2009, the release we'll be examining. This version contains the four base sprues from 35225 with two additional sprues, one of those being the Africa Core figures at rest, and there's another one with oil drums, jerry cans, and other sundries. You can buy this kit practically anywhere. Kit 89717 is kind of a compilation kit. I wasn't able to date that one reliably, so we'll say sometime in the 2000s. This release, uh, unfortunately, is as elusive as the previous Commander Wagon, just in terms of its availability and the information on it that's not out there, well, out there or not out there. But likely the release contains the Base 35 225 kit, as well as an Atalari, what looks like a Toad 75 assault gun. And if the box art is accurate, we should find three artillery men waiting for us inside. And finally, Kit 225 149 Commander Wagon with seven figures that was released in 2012. Two of those figures are found likely on the 35 225 sprues, and uh, new sprues are probably added to include five additional HQ staff figures, and they're looking rather dapper in their riding trousers and boots, I must say. The new sprues likely come also with staff accoutrements, briefcases, and the like. And if the cover is loyal to the contents, Army Command pennants are included as is likely a new theme appropriate decal sheet. Of interest is the female non-com. We don't see too many of those in our kit figures, and she's looking rather pert and proper, and there she is. Tamiya also makes a 148 scale version of the Steer, and other manufacturers have released the vehicle in 172nd scale. There is a mixed media 135 scale release of the Steer in very interesting variants. That kit, those kits are floating around somewhere. That's by the French firm ADV Azimut. Uh, very cool if you can find those kits. But for all intents and purposes, if you want to build the 135th scale Steer, the Tamiya line is the only kit on the block. And that'll do it for the Tamiya 135th scale Steer 1500 product line. So let's start off just with kind of a general unboxing to get a good overview of everything that's inside. This is, of course, the most exciting part. It always brings back memories of being a kid at Christmas. All right, so this is what we get inside. Now, it's gonna be, not going to be packed exactly the same way because I've been rummaging through here uh, just in preparation for the video. But uh, this will give us a good over, overhead view. A little decal sheet. Uh, we've got this here sprue that looks like it's some oil cans and jerry cans. Rather nice. Here's our Africa crew at rest sprue so there we have that one and then we have our oh, a little bonnet or a little hood depending on what area of the world you live in so rather nice and then we get the uh, the core kit and that comes in one two uh, well three and a half sprues with uh, the clear windows here now we're gonna look at everything in more detail but this is just kind of a general overview what I want to really get at here is the instructions so let me just set this aside and let's see if we can kind of show a little overhead view of everything that you get I'm banging my microphone here okay so there it is there so that's a not bad little cornucopia of plastic for the forty dollars we spent and here's the instructions and uh, let me just clean up here let me read so the instruction sheet is classic to me, a fair light bond paper, all black and white throughout. Little product shot at the top here from a slightly different angle showing our uh, Africa Corps guys at rest here. A little bit of a write up as usual. So let's tear into it. What do we got here? Uh, standard sort of little uh, precautions, safety precautions. Uh, all the color callouts and Tamiya color, which is great. Some of the basic tools you'll need, that's fine. So as always, uh, I think there's 14 steps to build the vehicle proper. There's an extra step for the oil cans and jerry cans and one extra step to put the figures together and some accessories. So uh, step one is always most of these vehicle assemblies, trucks, uh, this goes for pretty much every manufacturer starts this way. Here's your undercarriage, bottom of the engine going down, little cross member here. Uh, here's the bottom of the engine going in, the front suspension, here's some shock absorbers this is torsion bar some of your boots there 
and your rims and it does give you kind of this side angle here to uh, make sure you get your alignment correct <clears throat> just looking at this though posing this these uh, wheels turn might be a bit of an issue because of that solid bar there I'm sure we can solve it I also thought the Kubel wagon was going to be difficult to do but it was quite easy to post turn but uh, we'll have to see about this okay we'll look at the sprues later all right coming up here we've got let's see here step two our differential going in our drive shafts going in it looks like some steering uh, rods going in there some hooks quite straightforward differential and uh, here's our exhaust kind of nice that it's a separate piece so we can weather that up rust it up nicely uh, interestingly enough the tubes are not hollow but they've got a little dent in there we'll look at that uh, a little bit later but interestingly I, that's not slide molded but we'll see uh, okay we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the spruce let's crack on here there's our rear differential our leaf springs going down that's our rear part uh, the wheel construction is reminiscent of the Kubel wagon it kind of has this construction where you don't need to mask the back these rims kind of slide in the back unfortunately the business end of the tires the front well we'll have to figure out how how to mask those or you can you know paint them carefully I do see poly caps which is kind of nice so you can kind of build everything and then pop the wheels off to paint them and weather the under chassis that's kind of nice dragon does not do that we're just coming off that uh, that Hummel kit and uh, 16 pads or four wheels none of them have uh, poly caps so it's always refreshing coming back to Tamiya here all right so step four we're just uh, basically a whole step devoted just to put the wheels on which we can take off because the poly caps little uh, hook going on the back and here's where we have to kind of decide what uh, version we're going to build here uh, if we do build this version it's got the spare tire on the outside I kind of rather like that look so that's probably the one I'm going to go with if you build this one it's got a little bit more clean look to the side and the spare is on the inside uh, this construction here so and uh, here, well, we're just showing the dashboard, unfortunately, and the instrumentation being painted, which I am not happy about. I mean, you could dry brush that, but it never looks as good as decals. And unfortunately, as we'll see, the decal sheet does not have any instrumentation on it. I've got a little uh, little set for Kubel wagon and Schwimm wagon. I might be able to cheat that. I'm going to have to look at some reference photos to see if I can get away with that. I don't know if there's any aftermarket, but I always like, prefer, if you will, you know instrumentation here I wish some of these kits would kind of adopt some of the instrumentation that some of the aircraft manufacturers uh, do with PE painted PE and other things so we're a little bit behind in our armor here uh, in our armor kits okay so uh, steering column in case I didn't mention it already here's the firewall and the sides going in to build the body and again we have a choice here of the uh, spare being on the inside or outside and coming up here we've got a looks like a couple of wooden looks like foot rests I wonder if they're little lockers that can uh, stash stuff maybe tools or something and another little wooden block there looks like for your feet which is kind of interesting because the wagon had kind of wood uh, slats for the feet so the Germans always like to use wood for the foot rest uh, here we get a side angle just so we can align our stick shift and our emergency parking brake etc kind of the liner going in here for the spare and we're here we're mating the body to the uh, to the well, chassis I guess that would be and they're suggesting adhesive tape so well temporary hold with the cellophane tape okay uh, this construction here the seats are somewhat dragon-esque quite a few pieces those are just the supports for the rear seat kind of had uh, these bench seats I guess for the variant we'll be making which is kind of a, a troop carrier style if you will uh, some tiny parts and this vehicle actually has a lot of I thought they were gun mounts basically the crew these are little clips they're almost like gun racks if you will and you can put your rifles in there just so they don't rattle around when you're driving you don't have to hold on to them it's got <clears throat> quite a few of them in 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 this kit which makes sense if it's a troop carrier because people have their gewares uh, you know ready at the standby here if there's infantry so there's quite a few of these little uh, gun clips if you will these uh, rifle racks and it's showing the installation of that weird nylon mesh and that uh, pattern in that mesh does not match the actual thing would have been nice to have PE in here and uh, we'll have a look at the box art to see that they actually got it correct in the box art and in fact they actually got the pattern correct here in the instructions too uh, let me see if I can uh, focus in on this for you yeah you see the patterning well no they're depicting the uh, the mesh there interestingly enough on the box art they depict it correctly so I'll just put a little shot in here and you can see that uh, the actual box art, the, the sort of the liners for the air intakes there, 
the patterning is correct on the box art, not correct on this inner picture here, nor in the little nylon mesh that they give you, but uh, that's kind of nitpicky. I think it'll still look fine. All right, so let's pick up where we left off. Uh, okay, so there it is there, and it's got a couple of these little uh, vents here. In fact, I've seen more time pictures of these vents open, so I guess they've installed these. Now, I'm not sure whether that's desertized or all the vehicles come like that, but likely all the vehicles come like that, irrespective of the campaign where they serve. But again, I don't think you can post them open, but uh, I've seen photos of them open. So, And that's just the hood of the bonnet going down to the fenders, and <clears throat> I think this is going to scream out for a little dent technique that we uh, practiced there in our Kubel wagon build. <clears throat> okay, so step nine, we just have the seats going in. Uh, I'm also curious to see if we've got knockouts on the back of these seats like the Kubel. Uh, in fact, I know they do because I checked, but uh, we'll, we'll look at that once we look at the parts. Here's the doors. Uh, the vehicle is very tiny doors. I've always been kind of amazed at how small those doors are. You know, guys with all their kit and gear on and everything getting out of these little doors. Anyways, we'll see. So nice leather seats. We'll have to practice our leather painting there. The accordion style roof, which is kind of like the Kubel wagon as well. There's a hard top uh, variant of this in the real world. I'm not sure if there's any aftermarket. Uh, there was a truck version of this thing. We'll look in our little aftermarket section to see if uh, it does actually have... Uh, or let us build that uh, sort of truck enclosed rear end variant, but uh, not in this kit, unfortunately. Okay, so here, uh, what are we putting in here? Looks like, hmm, recovery tracks. Yeah, that's what those are. It looks like they're stashed underneath, and those kind of help uh, in the desert if you get caught in sand. Um, probably all the very all the variants have it. Uh, we'll see why because the base kit is not just a desertized version the base kit you can make a uh, steer that served in all theaters of uh, war for the germans during world war ii so i think that all the vehicles had uh, you know these recovery tracks there so the jack going in which is kind of nice we're going to weather that up nicely there's the no tech distant light i've always wanted to do a little video on this it's kind of interesting it's got uh, sort of Depending how far you are from the vehicle, and I believe the breakdown is 50 meters and 150 meters, and it depends on how these little lights merge. It's kind of interesting technology, uh, but I guess at night it helps you space your vehicles. Uh, I believe in, in, you know, whether you're going in convoy where your vehicles can be in close or whether you're spread out in a sort of combat formation. So it's kind of interesting technology. A little bit of an aside. All right, and this is how a little instruction video becomes an hour long when we start to uh, really get into the uh, technology and details. But, you know, we're kind of wonks here, so we do that. Here we're just mating a whole step, just mating the uh, undercarriage here to the body. A couple of step up, little step hooky thingies or whatever. And it shows the proper angle on the side, which is kind of nice. Attaching hook, they call it. Okay. And you do have to open a hole here, so pay attention. I believe that's probably where the Notex go, so, or the Bosch lights. Okay, so that's step 11. 12 here we're just assembling oh we've got those little windshield wire uh, little windshield wiper motors there very reminiscent of the Kubel wagon but unlike the Kubel this has two windshields in it again they give you these clear I'm not sure if it's acrylic or styrene uh, but they always fit great very easy to assemble a little bit of white glue drop those in no problem we can pre-paint it first and then drop them in that uh, that saves us having to mask that so that's kind of nice there's our no tech there's our Bosch lights here's the sort of the cow catcher going in uh, what else we got here? We got our shovel, our no tech night light here. And interesting enough, you can actually pose the windows kind of, kind of uh, pushed up a little bit. Now I'm not sure the actual um, use for that. I don't know whether that allows ventilation or you know prevents glare or whatever. But it's kind of interesting, and I have seen some more time photos of those windows up like that. So you can pose those up. I hear the lights going down. Holder for a jerry can, no doubt. There's a little pickaxe tool, so we'll pre-paint those and attach them. We'll have a look at the buckles. Uh, you know, the kit, I think, is dated 1998, so... And no photo wedge, so it should be okay, but not great. And we've got our mirrors, and again, like we griped in our uh, cool wagon build, there's no mylar in this kit like some of the newer Tamiya car kits, so a little dab of silver paint will do us there. Jerry can going in looks like another mirror there Jerry can assembly more of those gun rack little gun attachment things there for the crew you can see they're all over the place four or five of them anyway and step 14 so that's the vehicle there complete and then here we've got a uh, step just to build up our oil drums not crazy about this two-part oil drum uh, years back I built I think it was an M3 older version of the light Stewart uh, marine tank a marine version and I bought some resin 
uh, oil drums, and they were one piece. They were great, and I just find sort of getting rid of these seams uh, challenging, not impossible, but a bit challenging. It does come with a little hand pipe, uh, sorry, a little hand pump, and here we're just building up the uh, jerry cans, and we can see here we're painting these with a white stripe because uh, Germans did differentiate the cans that held water from the ones that held fuel by putting a white stripe on them because, of course, you cannot sully your water with fuel because it makes it unpalpable, so you have to keep those separate. So we'll, we'll paint a couple of those up that way I think and weather those up nicely with a little bit of chipping probably hairspray okay and here we're building up our figures and a uh, little bonus in the kit it, we've got this little uh, desigrade telescope this binocular spotting scope which is kind of nice so we get that as an accessory and here we can see we can actually build a couple of different versions of our guys that are seated they can have this little uh, bandana over their face there to uh, sort of combat the uh, sand so it's kind of cool. They kind of look kind of mysterious, which is kind of neat. <clears throat> and here we're finally just attaching the uh, figures to little bases. I've never kind of figured out why I'd want to do that. But what is nice about this kit, the little accessories, I'm not sure if these oil cans would really go in the steer anywhere. There's really no room for them. But if you're building a diorama, they're kind of handy to have. It's kind of nice that they throw it in. So, Okay, so what else? Okay, and finally we've just got three different versions here. Unfortunately, black and white color schemes. So the first version here, these two here, they have a base of that kind of odd German kind of pinky orange. And they show that it's mixed uh, using flesh and red brown in a certain ratio they suggest here. And the color's kind of interesting. We'll look at, I kind of have an SAS Jeep that I pinned in that scheme. So we'll have a look at how that color looks a little bit later. <clears throat> Probably in the build video. So, uh, but this one here, it's got that uh, kind of that odd, uh, as I said, orangey color. And this has what do we got here? Buff stripes. And this is for the Special Command Dora Southern Libya Unit, North Africa, 1942. And this vehicle really made its reputation in North Africa for its reliability and stoutness. That's really where its reputation. I mean, it was renowned for its reliability. So excellent vehicle on the whole in terms of the engineering. Soldiers seem to like it. Here we've got 69th Panzer Grenadier Regiment, 10th Panzer Division, again, uh, North Africa, Tunisia, I'm sorry, 1942. Again, that's that sort of German pinky orange color with, what do we got here, gray splotches. So this is buff splotches, kind of light buff stripes for this one. And this has got kind of very, very subtle, just blotchy kind of uh, little dabs here and there of uh, gray, so it's kind of interesting. All right, and finally, we've got, let's see here, let me just push this up, 92nd Independent Panzer Grenadier Regiment in the Balkans, spring, summer 1944, and that's just a Dunkel gelb, but it has kind of nifty markings here that we'll look at once we look at the decal sheets, so, so that'll do it for the instructions. Looking at some of the smaller parts in the kit first, if we take a quick look at the decal sheet, they're, uh, you know, typical to me of decals. The registration's good, the color's good, the white's a little stark. Let me get a little closer. You get that kind of funky scorpion emblem, that uh, red on white, which goes right on the hood, which is going to look great if we decide to build that variant. Uh, oh, tiny, tiny little helmet emblems there, so those are kind of nifty. Uh, but unfortunately, no instrument decals, so that is definitely disappointing, and I am not sure what this one is. But to me, uh, decals are always good quality, no problems there, never have any problems. All right, so the next one is this clear, I believe it is styrene, it could be acrylic, uh, sort of die-cut windows. I'm not going to take them out of the bag again because I don't want to scuff them up, but can reminiscent of the Kuba wagon. They always fit good, these die-cut ones, so no problems there. And you get your little polycaps, uh, no extras. You need four of them, so don't lose them. So I'm going to leave those in the bag. All right, what else we got here? And this kind of nylon mesh. I'm going to see if I can focus in on the uh, pattern for you. You know, it's adequate out of the box. It's not accurate, though. And I'm just going to put up a couple of pictures here from a museum-bound steer. And we're looking for kind of these straight lines and some of those air vent intakes and on the front. So, but, yeah, I guess it's adequate. And finally, we're going to take a look at the hood here. Uh, the casting's nice. I don't want to take it out of the bag because, again, I don't want to scuff it. But uh, the molding is nice. No problem. I don't 
think you can pose it open or anything, but it looks pretty good. And interestingly enough, the contemporary company today, Steer Daimler Push, makes tractors with this characteristic round hood. So it looks like it's kind of a theme that they've had over the years. Amazing that it's been around since the war. So that'll make up the small parts. So the entire to me a 135th scale steer line would have these three and a half or four sprues depending on how you look at it would be common to all the kits with the exception of the command car version. Now these three sprues here are actually stamped kit 35, 225, 1998. This one has the same stamping but oddly enough it's also stamped 35, 235. So I'm not sure if it's been retooled but most of the steer kits other than the command car version will have these four sprues and this sprue might be slightly altered but we'll look at that uh, I'll show you that dating in a moment so let's look at these ones individually first so we'll start with the little guy first and here you get your seats and I'm going to be playing focus pulling here so please stick with me and we can see the leather detail the sort of folded leather is nice and we're going to get some nice uh, leather painting uh, practice on here in this kit so that looks great the bench seat but the back like the Kubel wagon kit we've got four nasty knockout blemishes and really a bad place and they're a real pain to clean up and we've also got it there on the bucket seat now I'm not sure whether those three are hidden when we can build the thing but uh, we have to be aware of that and uh, just nothing really of, of note here just the brackets for the seats and a very delicate part there we can see to be careful with that one so okay so that's that sprue there oh and we get the little uh, step little step rails if you will that go at the bottom of the vehicle okay there's that sprue and we get this one here and I haven't seen too many aftermarket tires for this but the ones in the kit aren't bad the details pretty good on them we'll get a focus and they have a clever way of kind of putting them together on the back little piece inserts there so we don't have to mask the back but the business end the important end unfortunately we do have to mask or hand paint I'm not sure if there's aftermarket uh, masks available but so they're the tires and the leaf springs details good let's try to get some focus there we go the top the steering wheel is pretty good it's not too thick so that's molded quite nicely some of the stick shifts that looks great the lights we're not going to play guess the parts but there's the cow catcher the front is clean the back does have knockouts but no point in looking at it. a little bit of cleanup is going to be needed there on these round parts and here's your one of your wehrmarkt wehrmarkt soldiers and he's got a pretty good face on him let me get a focus in on that and that's what's nice if you buy this kit although it is the africa core it's got these wehrmarkt figures so you can really build this uh, steer in any theater of operations really you just have to watch your decals a little bit of wood graining on that piece which is kind of nice or wood graining there we can see i mean the molding's good the plastic's good quality there's the binocular spotting ter uh, ter uh, telescope and well and there we have a jerry can and it does have a very slight lettering on it that's indented so we could just see that let me hold that steady for you there we go so that's rather nice not bad for molding that uh, dates back to uh, 1998 tiny tiny little cap not as nice as maybe the dragon ones the three-part ones with the pe but always one little hair right just one and there goes my camera okay so there we go all right let's focus that so there's that one now again all these ones so far are stamped 1998 kit 35 to 25 as is this one so there's another base one and there's a cockpit floor oddly it's got kind of a dimply texture it doesn't have a diamond pattern or anything like that i'm not sure how accurate that is i'm going to check that out but not a whole lot i'd want to do about it that'll take a wash that's great here's the body sides so we do get the choice of the body details good there are knockouts on the back <clears throat> but i'm not sure if they're going to be hidden or not so gotta keep an eye out for them there's another one there in the corner and same story with the doors on the back there's four knockouts on each and that's probably visible so we have to clean that up the front though is clean so we're lucky there are tiny doors on this vehicle and also we can see solid door handles right again like the molding and the kubo wagon so if you really want to get nitpicky although the molding's nice i mean if you look it's got that little round part in it very nice 
And there's more leather uh, sort of texturing on the seats. Here's the classic folded uh, canvas roof. I'll paint that up. Nice highlights and shadows. Uh, there's our little mirror. No mylar in this kit, though. Let's get the front of that mirror. Where are we? There it is there. No mylar, so it'll probably dab with silver paint. Always one hair. <laughs> that hair's not going to defeat me this time. Okay, there we are. Nice and clean. That molding's good. Very delicate. It does have a knockout mark right in the corner, so we have to kind of we'll sand that lightly just to make it look like it's kind of rounded off. And what else we got here? So just want to look at the clasp here. That texturing on the on that uh, spare liner. And here's the shovel and uh, the attachment clasp is okay. Okay, I just want to prove to you guys what I'm getting at here with these sprues because I think one of these sprues has been retooled. So let me just find the uh, the dating on this. Okay, there's the date. Let's see if I can't focus in on that. Now we're very close here, so and it'll probably be upside down. Okay, there it is. We can see it. 1998. So this goes back to the original release in 1998, and the sprue. Kit number should be on there. Just give me a second. Okay, there it is there. Okay, so so all the sprues we've looked at so far are marked 35 to 25 and dated 1998, except for the one other little sprue, and I'll show you what I mean. Which makes me think that this sprue is probably retooled. Okay, there it is there. Now, this side of the sprue says 35 to 25. And this side of the sprue says 35235. So I'm not sure whether this one's been retooled and whether it's slightly different from the original version. So, but let's have a look at the figure. The face is good. He's an officer. Of course, he's upside down. Okay, there he is. The face is nice. Actually, totally fine. That's the engine detail. Bottom of the engine looks like a little rudimentary. There's the frame. That'll be great. Uh, the detail on the soldier is nice. He's got his little iron cross there. Yeah, not bad. There's the body side. <clears throat> Exterior detail's good. We do have knockouts on the inside. Anything else of note? Tiny little shock absorbers, but the detail is great. Yeah. Okay, so there's that one. Oh, there's a, there's a little pistol. But again, so it makes me think that this sprue here has been retooled. So the original kit 225, this sprue might not be precisely the way it's depicted here. Yeah, the one piece molded fenders. I think we're going to do our little dented trick on there. Oh, and one thing I did want to show you, here's the mufflers and the exhaust pipes. And on the back, actually, if we look where my finger is, I'll try to get up close here. Again, it's hard to see the monitor. They do give you a little dent, okay? It's not hollowed out exactly, but it's a little pilot hole there. So if you want to accentuate that a little bit, go in there with a uh, pin vise. I'm not sure how they would have molded that, to be honest. So, and uh, one other issue. So there's the, f there's the front suspension. That's torsion bar, I guess. There's your boots. But this post is going to make a great anchor point for our... Um, our poly cap oh not there hang on there right those posts are gonna be good for the poly caps but they're gonna be hard to pose with the wheels sort of off centered or turned so we'll have to kind of give that a think I don't think I want to put all the tires straight though okay so there's that sprue there so kind of an oddity this sprue I'm not sure maybe retooled all right so finally you get a couple of uh, value added now this sprue is definitively stamped 35 sorry yeah 35 305 and dated 2009 and that really makes this the desertized version that we're looking at here uh, the details good i not crazy about the figure faces we'll see in a second a couple of rug sacks that's rather nice two-part german canteen all right so here's this guy and you know look i know he's drinking and all the rest of that kind of stuff he's got his head back but he does look a little bit like a fish man okay fish lips kind of sort of right uh, and these guys here, the face, uh, is not my favorite. Okay, but, but, okay, that guy's not terrible, but he almost looks like, <laughs> like 
like Bush. I hate to say that, but it kind of looks like I'm almost. All right, the saving grace is we do have the bandana look, and that looks great. So uh, personally, if I'm going to put figures in here, I would definitely go with these guys. They would put those bandanas on, just, you know, sandstorms and that. Of course, get a mouthful of sand isn't great. Okay, there's some caps. They look great. Some of the arms. There's the other bandana guy. Looks good. Definitely the one to use. Okay, what else we got? His hideous faces. And we've seen that. Rugsacks. Oh, yes. Pit helmets. Very nice. Oh, yes. Right. I want to show you this. So there's the goggles. They're solid, unfortunately. Would have been nice if those were cast clear and we could paint the rims, but unfortunately, they're solid. And you get another one down here. This one you might actually be able to drill out and put some clear acrylic in there, but uh, it would have been nice if they were clear parts. So that really looks like this sprue was made specifically for this... Uh, for this Africa Core at rest version. So you get that one. And finally, you get this kind of value added. It's a single sprue. And to me, actually releases this as a standalone kit. 35186 uh, was molded in 1995. And when you purchase the kit, it's about eight bucks. And it comes with two of these sprues. So, and the detail's good. The barrels are dented. <clears throat> I mean, we have our little dent to trick, but it's already built in. Now, I'm not crazy about the two-part barrels. Uh, they give you good witness marks, you know, the pins and holes, so they go together easily. But again, you've got to clean up a big seam. Years back, I bought some resin ones. I used them for uh, an M3 Stewart uh, Marine version, so I don't have them anymore. But those resin ones were great, not a lick of cleanup. So it's a bit of a pain. And there's your jerry cans. And if actually we look very closely, they do have indented lettering, so... And that concludes this inbox review of the Tamiya 135th scale steer. Stay tuned for the build video due in the coming days. As always, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for joining me. Stay well and all the best.